Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. It would bring back up the scripture. Amen. Amen. But we're going to focus just on verses 8 and 9. Philippians 4, verses, Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. And it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen. I want you to just shout out in the atmosphere these things. Shout out again, these things. And then I want you to just close your eyes and down in your spirit, I want you to say perfect peace. Come on, say it again. Perfect peace. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you for allowing us to be able to be a vessel. If we've done anything in thought, word, and deed to him, you from coming, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Let your word come forth. If this is not your word, Lord, let your word be coming forth and let all this be negative and thrown out, but your word come forth because these are your people and they need a word from you. Give them a word today, Lord. Cover me in the blood of Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to use me in order to, to, to lift you up, to lift you up, to lift your people up, to let them be the light they need to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I see Martha Salter, amen. Trawick, hallelujah. Some of my members, hallelujah. So my family, we welcome you, welcome, we welcome. We see Diane George Richards, amen, has joined us. Irma Ransom or Reverend uh, Irma Charmer as well. We, we welcome you, welcome you, welcome you again. Our subject today is these things and perfect peace. These things and perfect peace. Now, by no means do I consider myself an expert on peace. Nor do I pretend that I always reside in peace. But I have observed that in these times and, and during these seasons, people are searching for peace. With all of the inventions, all of the advancements and knowledge that has been handed down through the generations, down through the centuries, People are still searching and seemingly have not found peace. Now, I'm not talking about peace between nations or countries, nor am I referring to peace between families or, or neighbors or loved ones. I am referring to the peace of mind, the peace in our innermost thoughts, the, the peace where no one can enter but ourselves and God. I am referring to the peace that can reside within our spirit. This is a peace that will, will reside no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances are. A peace that is not motivated by outside stimulus. A peace that is not predicated on a positive condition. I am talking about a perfect peace. In the midst of calamity, in the midst of failure, in the midst of disappointment, and in the midst of disagreements. People have become desperate. Their lives on the outside look perfect, but on the inside they carry this feeling of despair. They carry this feeling of a lack of peace. They, 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 they feel that they have no access to to peace within their spirit. People are desperately, they are desperately searching for peace. They have been searching so long and they have been searching so hard that they have turned to, to, to any means necessary to find peace. 
Some have turned to drugs to find peace. Others have, have turned to alcohol to find peace. And still others are trying to find peace by eating themselves to death. And others are getting involved with numerous relationship and never committing to one thinking if they commit they will never find peace and if that's not the case people are trying to find peace by taking pharmaceutical products going to the doctor say give me some my nerves are bad if not they're going and, and buying cigarettes tobacco products and smoking them each and every day all day long trying to find peace. Others are listening, looking for medicinal products, you know, natural herbs, things that don't have bad products, uh, ser serious uh, meditation, uh, uh, chants, and all these things because they are trying to find peace. Some of us are, are running every day. Some of us are walking every day. And many of us are trying to stay on a constant constant routine, a regimen at the gym. All because we are trying to find some peace. Still others are attempting to get in high positions thinking that's going to give them peace. Looking for power. Power over people. Power over organizations. Power over, over networks to find peace. And still others are trying to find peace in all the successes that they have accomplished in their lives. And with all of that, they still have not found peace. You know, in today's society, we hear movie stars overdosing on drugs. We hear war heroes committing suicide or, or going out and shooting up everybody because they don't agree with things or people with mental illnesses that just can't find peace doing things, things that the prejudice against each other, killing each other just to, to, to feel some kind of feeling within themselves. Even presidents and corporate executives have had nervous breakdown all because they could not find peace. And since this COVID epidemic, have mercy, marriages are dissolving and divorce rate is up as high as 40%. Businesses are dissolving, not because of a lack of customers, but because unresolved disagreements between business partners. Have mercy. There is a strain on relationships Relationships even in the church between pastors and members, members and elders, bishops and elders, deacons, all this frustration. Everybody is trying to find just a little peace. Do you have peace? Are you operating in a peace of mind? With the peace of mind. Do you have the peace that ingrains itself within your spirit? During this COVID, our children are sick of being around us at home. And even though it seems that they don't like school, they're ready to get back out and go back to school. People are starting to, to, to even seriously miss church. Those folks that didn't even go to church. Oh, we need to hurry up and open the church. I can get back to church. Amen. But we can praise God. And some wives and some children and even some, some husbands are looking at the, each other saying, What? Go back where? But all because they realize that they don't have peace. Here in our text this morning, hallelujah. We, we, we find Paul addressing the church at Philippi. He is addressing them concerning their social practices and how they deal with and think about things. You see, the church at that time was experiencing great persecution. And while this persecution, in this persecution, the people have become discouraged and many of them are not having peace within themselves, nor having peace with each other. 
They can't find peace in the situation, nor could they find peace in any of their circumstances. And this mental condition has caused them to, to have interpersonal relationship problems with members. Strife has risen up in the congregation. Problems with, with, with how the members were dealing with each other within each other's ministries that they were a part of. Paul even addresses two of the members in particular when he says, I urge you, you are the dia, and I urge Sentai to live in harmony in the Lord. Paul was addressing this situation, addressing the circumstances of what was going on in this young community. The church in Philippians was young in their Christian commitment and they needed help and even warnings about the dangers that run that they run into of disloyalty, of betrayal, of unfaithfulness and sinfulness in the enthusiasm of having a new ministry. How many of us are running into those things now? In this letter, Paul tells them to think on these things. What things you say? The whatsoever things. Whatsoever is true, he tells them. Whatsoever is honorable or noble, whatsoever is right or just, whatsoever is pure, pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is admirable or commendable. <clears throat> and why think on these things? Well, Paul tells us that the God of peace will be with you and that the peace of God would reside within you. Paul is calling them to think and put into practice these things. Bishop Curtis Frank Cummings, the 95th elected and consecrated bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, has a saying which says, be sweet. In being sweet, we must take on what Paul is challenging us to do as Christians in this environment. Yes, we are uh, now operating outside of the physical church, but we must now embrace the spiritual church. Jesus tells us that there will come a time when we will not worship God in this mountain. We will not worship God in a physical building, but we will worship God in spirit and in truth. Now is the time. We are in those times. The church on many levels are having a hard time. Its members are lacking commitment. Trouble arising up in within the ranks. Disagreements on how we should do things, what and, and, and what and how we should do things and, and, and when we should do these things. And in many meetings, we're having disagreements. Should we open? Should we close? Should we do it in cars? Should pastor wear a robe? Should we do it on Facebook? Should we do it on YouTube? Should we use Zoom? Should we use OBS? Why aren't you using my media department? Why aren't you doing this? We're fussing about money. We're fussing about how to spend the money and do with the money. We have no peace. We have no peace at home. We have no peace in church. We have no peace outside of us, nor do we have peace with inside of ourselves. And I believe that all of this is happening because we lack peace. And many of us don't know how to find peace. But today God is giving us our solution. He's giving us what we need to have in a peace. God is telling us to think 
on these things. We must live with the mindset of these things. What things again you ask? Well, we must live in truth. No more lying on one another, accusing one another falsely or for personal gain or lying to one another. We must live honorably. Stop being devious and, and, and divisive, tearing folks down for your own entertainment or amusement, thinking it will make you feel better. We must live just and right. No more treating people unfairly or even being unfair to yourself. We, we <clears throat> must live with a pure heart. No more dwelling on bad intentions, plotting or tricking each other or being a bamboozler. Yes, I said it, a bamboozler. We must be lovely. Don't have a nasty attitude or a disposition. Agree that we can disagree. Be sweet as Bishop Cummings has told us to be. God is telling us be sweet. And be commendable. Don't do things half-based. Have pride in what you do. You know you can do better. What you do reflects you. You're not hurting anybody else. You're hurting yourself because everybody knows you're in charge of it. You were doing it. You were responsible for it. So it is a direct reflection on you. Live commendably. And as Paul has told us, family brothers and sisters, Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Stop dwelling on the bad things. Dwell on the good things. Pray about the bad things. Stop dwelling on what might happen or what could happen. Dwell on what's happening now and how we can take what we need to do and take it to the next level. Paul tells us, whatever you have learned, or received or heard from me or seen in me. Paul is telling them, look, I have set the example for you. <clears throat> I've taught you what God has told me to teach you. You were there, you heard it, you see me in my decision making. You see me operate in the ministry, out in the world, knowing that I am not I am in the world, but I am not of the world, so I don't do the things the same way the world does. You see, that I lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge the Lord and allow the Lord to direct our path. Learn. Receive what you've heard, what you've seen. And it says, and the God of peace will be with you. If we think on these things, if we operate with these things, always in our minds, always on our thoughts, always in front of us, if we would incorporate and put into practice these things, we will find perfect peace. Not that storms won't rise up, but we will have peace. Not that problems won't happen, we will have peace. Not that disagreements won't happen, we will have peace. Not that people won't die or get sick, but we will have peace. Not that our situations and circumstances will go our way, but we will have peace. Peace of mind, peace down in our spirit. We will find that 
perfect peace that does not come from outside, does not come from inside, but come from God that dwells inside our spirits. The peace which surpasses all understanding and our mindsets. And the peace of God, the God of peace, will be with us. Hallelujah. We pray God that we would operate in these things. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome my nephew Martin Walters as he has joined in with us. Celia Pitts as she's here with us. But now I want you to listen to our invitation to discipleship. Hallelujah. As we dwell on God in our lives, as we dwell on accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as we dwell on receiving the peace of God within us. 